Okay, so here we can see our video camera. It's the Blackmagic Ursa Mini 4K. It's important to make sure your camera has a global shutter and can take in timecode as well as SDI. Here we can see the connections on the camera. We have LTC timecode in coming from our Averts master clock. We have separate SDI in for sync also coming from the master clock. Finally, we have SDI out, which will go into our capture PC. Next up is the Averts master clock. This model number 5601 has SDI. If you want to capture SDI rates like 1080p at 60 frames per second, this is essential. First, we connect the LTC out, which goes to our camera. Next up is the TG1, which also goes to our camera. Lastly, we connect up TG2, which supplies the timecode signal for our lock studio. The SDI out from the camera then needs to go to our capture PC using the capture card. In this case, it's the Blackmagic Decklink. Here we can see the Averts control software. It's here that we can set various timecode standards we want to use in our setup. TG1 needs to be set for a camera capture rate, in this case 1080p at 60 frames per second. TG2 is then set to the rate of our lock and motion capture system. For this we'll be running at 120Hz and timecode will be true 30. We then need to make sure that the LTC output matches that of our system. In this case, it's 30Hz. Here we can see Vicon's new lock studio. This box syncs the cameras in a similar way to the existing lock box. But this version also supports SDI. Here you can see we connect our motion capture system and take the TG2 SDI signal from the Averts box into the SDI in on the lock studio. Switching to Shogun 1.2, the first thing to do is set your capture rate and base timecode rate, in this case 120 and 30, respectively. If we then go down to the system properties for the deck link slash camera, you can see that it's sending out the correct video and timecode standard. We can also set the alias path to make sure the video has been recorded to the correct location. It's worth noting a fast, dedicated SSD is recommended when capturing high resolution video. Here we can also see settings for recording audio as part of the capture. Make sure to have it set to uncompressed and a minimum of two channels. The audio gets recorded via SDI into the VVID file and is then also included in the MOV after being converted in Shogun Post. On the right hand side of the capture panel, we can see that we have Genlock and Timecode, as both icons are green. It's worth noting you have to be in video calibration mode to see any track circles. Since the Vicon system is running at double the speed of our video camera, it's possible that the system and camera aren't frame aligned. If you can't see any circles on the wand, you will need to adjust the general offset parameter until they come into view. If you want to calibrate your SDI camera as part of your motion capture system, you need to make sure that the camera can see the wand. You also need to make sure that you mask out any background artifacts that could be considered circles that the calibration process could use. With the image too bright, you will end up masking the whole view. With it too dark, you may not see the wand. There are two ways to get this balance, and they both depend on the lighting conditions where you're trying to capture. The first option is to close the aperture on the camera, so it can't see as much in the background. Here you can see we've changed this from f-stop 2.8 to f-stop 8.7, making sure that we can still see the wand. Again, make sure to be in video calibration mode for this process. The other setting you can adjust is the threshold parameter from within Shogun. we have set the default to 0.6, which should be a good balance for most motion capture studios. If you're in a very bright and well lit space, you might need to raise this value. As you can see here, we have natural sunlight coming in from the roof, which is affecting the masking process. Raising the threshold to 0.7 allows us to still see the wand and reduces the amount of masking. With our settings dialed in, we are now ready to calibrate. This follows the same process as before. Video calibration is turned on if it isn't already, and you need to wave the wand so it's seen in both the video camera and the other Vicon cameras. It's normal for the video camera to see less wand information, and you can adjust the amount of frames for each type. Generally, half the amount of frames for a video camera is enough to get a good calibration. 
we're quickly going to align our origin. It's worth noting you have to turn off video calibration mode before you align. To test the calibration and to make sure the video cameras are aligned with our motion capture cameras, we're going to create a prop from the wand. Simply select the five markers and create a prop, making sure to specify the mesh you want to use. In this case, it's the flashlight. Now when we go to live, you can see the flashlight prop is constrained to the markers. You can see we've added separate view options for props now. As part of the calibration process, the offset in frames between the video camera and the Vicon system is calculated and applied automatically. It's worth noting that you can change the offset value in the decklink slash camera properties if you think it's got it wrong. An example of this would be if the reconstructed markers don't overlay the video markers correctly and are out of sync. Here we can see the prop mesh aligns perfectly with the camera's video, showing that calibration was successful and everything is in sync. In the next video we will show the overlay using a real actor and show how you can move the prop using the new manipulator. Thanks a lot for watching.